Okay, <clears throat> welcome to Val Valence Developer Diaries number 26. And today we're gonna go over the calendar widget, which is fairly new within uh, Valence 6.1. Um, and we'll just jump right in that. Before we start, I wanna point out one thing which we do have on our forms um, with the new, this was on four or five. Um, with the new widget, it does rely that your IBMI time zone system setting, Q-T-I-M-Z-O-N, is set correctly. Um, and that is needed because if, um, based on your time zone, let's say your IBMI is um, in East Coast and your times relate there, and then I'm accessing your application from uh, the West Coast, of course, I want to see the time correctly. So... All right, uh, let me go right to it. Okay, so we're just gonna use a table. I guess first I should say that the calendar widget depends on your table um, having a timestamp field, okay? Um, and I wanted to, we wanted to do it this way with uh, an existing table that's within Valence. So if you wanted to try it quickly, you can. And that table would be, VVWDG 100, and it has a timestamp field, which is the last maintained. So we're just gonna do that based off the last maintained timestamp of a widget. So these are just the widgets that are within Nitro App Builder. We just chose this file, so then you could do that easily too, if you wanted to. Um, and I'll just show file editor. So this is VVWDG 100, and we're gonna be going off of the last maintained timestamp, which is a timestamp column. Okay, and I've already created this data source. Just, just select all. Um, <clears throat> so let's go and create the widgets. Here's the new calendar. So the calendar needs at least one timestamp field and then a label field. I'm just gonna just do that right now. And we'll just do the cat idea of that. So, Right away, you see that it's plotting all of our widgets last maintained timestamp, so date and time, onto our calendar. You can have an end date, which would then be, you know, starting at X to Y. Um, we'll just just do this, just the, the start date. Um, and everything is kind of similar. You can limit results. We have the auto load, of course, the auto refresh. We have the tool tip, so if you hover over it, you would see a tooltip. So let's just, uh, I'll just throw the ID in there. Then you see the ID, okay. Um, UI, that's some of the standard title, subtitle. Um, default view is, oh, it's, it's defaulted to month. Um, you could change that to either be week or day. So, you know, here's our week, here's our day. Uh, if I switch this. So this means when it's initially created in your application, what is the current view, default view? Well, let's just say we wanted it week. So then it would just come into the week, current week view. Okay, we'll just leave it at month. Um, you can show weekdays only if you wanted to. Just show some removes the weekends. And the start time and end time. Um, so this is just making sure that if let's go to day view, shows it. So here, let's go to eight. I'll go back to day view. I'm gonna keep it in day view so we can keep on switching. So now it's starting at 8 a.m. You know, by default, it's and then padding, of course, colors are the same that you're used to using other widgets. You can have rules. So if we had a rule of, uh, um, I don't know, Sean, what would be a, isn't there a type of like grid or maybe something? If, maybe if like uh, uh, ID is less than 1010 or something, I don't know. Yeah. 
So there you go, see the color. So you can do all that just like you're used to. I'm just gonna remove that. Hey Johnny, before you leave yeah. that screen, I just wanted this, to mention one thing to, oh, oops. go on, sorry. This one? Uh, no, the other one. I didn't know if you were getting off of that last screen, that uh, configure. Um, that subtitle's new as well, because I, I, I think that probably is something that we haven't seen before. That title subtitle is on, it's not just the calendar, it's on all the widgets now. As of the last build, I'm, I think. I think so, as of the last build. So that's just a, some text below your title. <laughs> There we go. Yep. And that's on all widgets, right? Right. Okay. Uh, filters are the same. I'm not really going to go through those. Um, custom formatting is what you see here, right? The, the text itself. So we could do is, um, I don't know, let me turn. Uh, and we do get the record of your data, uh, um, maybe I'll put in the VVID of that widget. So you can see it's being pl placed in there. Um, so you can do custom formatting of what the user sees in the calendar itself. Um, and that's, the creation of that, that's pretty much it here. And then we'll get, next we're gonna go into uh, putting in an app and then dealing with behaviors and, and so on and app variables with the, the widget. So let me just save that. Did I miss anything else? We did the tool tip. Yep, okay. Okay, let's just uh, quickly create that. Okay, so we have our app. I'm gonna go here. And there are specific app variables for the calendar itself, um, active view. So that's just like, we had set in the widget where you said, what's the default view? It could be the you know, week, uh, month or day. Um, you can dynamically set that while it's in the app via app, app variables. Um, the same with the start time and end time. Um, same with weekdays only, which is another config, base config off that, that widget. Um, the date, okay. Like what is that date, the current date, for, app, for the app, the current date you want to set it to, because by default, it's always going to be like today. It's going to default to today and it highlights it. You can just, just to clarify, if you set the date app variable, that means it would, you know, if we had it set to, you know, January 1st of 2024, it would move the calendar. Yeah, it would just dynamically move the calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have like, uh, probably clicks if date and time is in the past. Um, if you don't want to go in the past to the in the past in the in the past, um, and then we have these configs, which I it's kind of hard to explain here. But um, so the the view switch. So this is this right here, the day, week, and month view. You could just hide that. Be like, I don't want the user to be able to change um, between day, week, or month when it's running. I just want to set the default to day and then that's it or set the week default to week and that's it. Um, so you could hide that if you wanted to. The same with the previous and next buttons if you didn't want them to move forward and backward, which is, you know, if you're in month view, it's moving forward a month or backwards a month. We just didn't know. So we just wanted to add all these for app variables in case these use cases needed to come and play for when you're creating apps with it. And then the last is just I want to hide all controls. They can't. They can't. They, you know everything is just hidden. Make it easy. Um, that's if you need it. I don't know if we. I don't know if people do. But um, okay. So let me just save that. We'll just see it running. 
And then we'll look at behaviors next. Okay, so here it is. I mean, there's nothing, we don't have any behaviors, so I'm clicking on these and nothing's happening, but you know, the widget is working as expected. I'm switching through weeks, I'll go back to month. I can switch months here, and then I can just go back to today, okay? All right, I'm gonna create a form off this same data source. So we can use it. So let's just put um, category description. And then I want the last. And we'll say edible on these. Okay. Um, since the timestamp field and we made it editable, <clears throat> the front end automatically will create actually two fields, the calendar, the date itself, and then a drop down for the time. Okay. Um, and then it, the front end and the back end will automatically, like the, well, I should say the front end will automatically get that value, re put it back into a standard timestamp that we're used to. And then you can update your database as, as normal. But UI wise, we needed to break it up by date and then time. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Let me add that form. I'm just going to move it over here. Move our left padding. I should say. Uh, we want it initially hidden, closable. And let's give this guy a little bit more width. Okay, now behaviors for the calendar itself, you're gonna see two events. One's called event click. <laughs> the event is event click and then daytime click. This gets executed when the user is actually clicking on an item in the calendar. So you have an item there. Um, this is if they're clicking on the calendar and there's, they're not clicking on exactly an item within the calendar. So if you wanted to be able to say, I'm in day view and they just click on I don't know, 10 a.m., there's no item there, they're just clicking on it. You could show a form to create a calendar entry for the date and time they clicked, okay? Um, we're just gonna, we'll just deal with the event click. So what we're gonna do is we wanna filter our widget and our new form, and we just wanna say ID to ID. Save that. And I'll quickly reload it. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the IBMI user list. So it's populating our form based off the record just like we're used to. And like I said, the difference is we have that maintained, which is broken out into two, two fields. One's a date picker and the other one is the time selector. Um, if I had enough, if, like I said, if I was in, let's say day is easier. If I was in day view, and I clicked here, if we were listening for that event, it would fire off with just the value of what, what time they clicked because it wouldn't have a real record of like, you know, widget because it didn't click it. And that would be useful if you're, if you're using this calendar to add entries, they click anywhere, you pop up a form and then, you know, save your record. Um, in this instance, we have just on the event itself and here we could show the form, they could change the dates, do whatever they need to. We would add a button to call RPG program to update our database based on you know, if the date's greater than the current date or, or, or something, whatever's needed. And let's, uh, let's go back to here. And let's just create, let's do like one of the app variables. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll change the default view or something like that. So. Uh, remember, we have, let's just say default view. Got it. 
I'm going to link this new app variable to the active view. And let's just add a button that would just set it. Uh, and this is, yeah. Okay. So that new button just setting our app variable. And what we were expecting to see is that while the app's running, I could dynamically just change what is the default view which our current default is month. So we're in month, I go to week, it's changed a week, okay? So in essence, you would have maybe something where it's like, I wanna to default to the week, um, but they can keep on changing if they want, or like we said, there's other app variables just to hide just this or everything. It's up to you in your use case. I think that's pretty much it. Unless Sean, do you have anything else you think or? For the calendar itself, uh, I can't think of anything else to add at the moment. No, okay. yeah, me either. Yeah, it's 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 pretty straightforward, um, but does give us a new type of view to, to view your data and interact with it in a calendar form. So yeah, if there's uh, any other no questions, I think that that'll end our twenty uh, sixth DD session. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. We'll have the video on our YouTube channel as, as always, and uh, we'll see you next time.